Okay, so uh, welcome back. Um, we have spent, been spending the last uh, several weeks discussing uh, many of the um, uh, properties of the real numbers, uh, many of the topological properties of real numbers. In particular, compactness has, has been um, playing a, a, a big role, uh, and I've given you some idea of why it's, it's important. Uh, really, compactness, you think of it as a finiteness condition, right? It's sort of the next best thing to being finite. Uh, and today we want to start talking about uh, sequences. And so this will actually bring us to uh, be developing concepts uh, like continuity, uh, continuous functions, what does it mean for a function to be continuous? That's defined in terms of limits. Uh, and so we have to say what it means to take the limit of a sequence, okay? Uh, before we do that, I would like to uh, issue a correction um, to something I said last time, which, uh, I just realized I was using a terminology in a way that's perhaps not the, the way that most people use a term, and I just wanted to make sure that this was uh, addressed. So uh, if you recall, one way to describe compactness, one characterization is in terms of something called the finite intersection condition. And I just want to clarify, uh, the way I've been using a finite intersection condition is, is at odds with with how it's normally used. So uh, let me just state the finite intersection condition. So the finite intersection condition is uh, basically, um, you say a collection has the finite intersection condition, a collection of sets has the finite intersection condition uh, if uh, any finite subcollection has a non-empty intersection. Okay, so um, we say it, it, uh, uh, some collection of sets has the finite intersection condition if any finite subcollection has a non-empty intersection. Now, um, I think what I did last time is I stated the finite intersection condition uh, as, uh, as this together with a conclusion. And um, the finite intersection condition is just the part that uh, is just this hypothesis, that if you have uh, a bunch of sets, it has the FIC if any finite subcollection has a non empty intersection. And then the characterization of compactness uh, can be expressed as follows. So there's a theorem which says a set is compact if and only if uh, any collection of uh, closed sets. So any collection of closed sets K alpha, and the way we will say it is that has the finite intersection condition, uh, has non-empty intersection. So this is um, like what I said before, but I'm just clarifying that the finite intersection condition is just the hypothesis part. Um, And last time we saw why compactness implies this, and I encourage you to think about why this implies compactness. Okay? So that's just to make sure that I made that correction in your notes. Willie. That means, that means every, yeah. Um, otherwise, I would have said there exists. So maybe. Uh, we should be more precise here. Every collection of closed sets that has the finite intersection condition has non-empty intersection. So I am demanding that this, that I'm only looking at collections that have the FIC. Okay? Because there certainly could be some collections that don't. Namely, um, take two disjoint closed sets. Certainly they would not satisfy the FIC and I'd be uh, demanding nothing about them. Okay, good.
good. So that's uh, just one I wanted to clarify with respect to compactness. So we're beginning uh, the next chapter in the in the course in the in the book in Rudin. And uh, we want to discuss the idea of a sequence. Okay? We've actually encountered sequences before. Right? When we started talking about countable uh, sets, we said, oh, okay, well, can we list it in a sequence? So really, what is a sequence? Uh, well, it's something that we've already uh, defined. But let me just say it again. Recall what a sequence is. Now, normally we notate a sequence by putting little braces around something like p sub n. So we're indexing a bunch of points. Uh, and we'll be in some metric space x. So a sequence p sub n in x, what is it? Well, it's really a function, isn't it? Like most of the objects uh, in. Uh, mathematics, we can define in terms of, of functions. So it's a function. Well, what does the function do? Well, the function actually takes the nat a natural number to the nth point, right? So you can think of it as a function that goes from the natural numbers to some point in x, so the metric space x, and it maps uh, some point little n to the point p sub n, a point in x. Okay, so that's that's what a sequence is, and we're doing this in the general context of metric spaces because I don't want you to just think of sequences of real numbers. Okay, at some point we're going to start thinking about sequences of functions, right? So uh, if you're a, a a physicist or an engineer, you, you'd be thinking about, you'd be interested in waveforms and whether they converge as a sequence. Okay? So this is the way I'm going to encourage you to think about uh, sequences. So let's just um, maybe begin to address some of these, uh, these issues. So um, you know, you might have, for instance, uh, let's think here. Um, how about, let's just imagine ourselves in the plane. So that's a metric space given by, let's say, Euclidean metric. And, um, you know, we want to understand what it means, uh, you know, what does a sequence look like? Okay, here's some point x. And you know you've got a bunch of points here moving around. Okay. Now of course that sequence of points appears to be doing something, right? So I might have you know p1, p2, p3. It's in some metric space. Now, again, this is a schematic of points in the plane, but we could also be talking about points in. Uh, point uh, a space of functions where each of these things is a function and asking do these things converge so there's the real question here maybe I'll put that here what does it mean for a sequence to converge there's the question Okay, well, clearly the picture I've drawn here, would you say that this sequence, if, if just informally thinking about this word, would you say that this sequence I've drawn here converges in the plane? It does? Why? Why, why does it converge? What, what makes this look like it's doing something that you might call converging? It's getting closer to some point. Yeah, so uh, when we're talking about convergence, at least in this picture, it, it appears to be getting close to something. Yes, that's, that's true. Maybe I'll call this point P. So um, let me label this picture.